Hi, welcome to the ever popular mailbag segment where I open my mail and, well, I've got a mail bonanza. I've got six items. Now, as it turns out, I think somebody has swamped me here. I think these three are from the same person. And we've got to check it out, the secret Australian military office. <laughs> It got here, no worries, the secret Australian military office, there we go. And uh, this is also from uh, Kowloon in Hong Kong as well. I mean, you know, I know Hong Kong's a big uh, place, but yeah, sit number 68, 600 Kowloon, I think it's the same person. There you go, El electronics, Jeff. Thank you very much, Jeff. All right, let's have a look here. Ah, it's a, it's a charger. Oh, that's right. I think um, I think he uh, e emailed me about this and wanted me to uh, crack it open and uh, have a look at it. So we might very well do that. It is an Australian uh, charger. It doesn't have the new uh, insulated thing, so technically you wouldn't be able to uh, sell that here. But uh, cheap and cheerful USB charger there. Probably from the one hung low factory, so probably built down to the lowest price point. What do we have here? Ah, oh, he sent me more. What do we got? A lithium ion battery, long lasting, high capacity power. What am I gonna do with that? Thank you very much. Actually, might be able to use it for the new uh, USB power supply. You'll see a video on that soon, I'm sure. Fee pussy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, look. Oh, pussy. Is that a pussy cat? No, don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, right. Nine months warranty. Wow, you don't see that every day, do you? There we go. And that is a, um, for a Motorola, see there, for Motorola. Don't have a Motorola phone. Uh. Awesome, I'm going to do that, take it apart. Maybe I could uh, uh, decode the serial um, if it's got one of those um, uh, ID chips in it, maybe. Eh, who knows. Next, here we go, what do we got? Ooh, a whole bunch of, ooh, little brick, little brick converters. So this is a whole bunch of convertery stuff. Definitely ripped off boards, you can see the copper stuck to the, uh, the pads stuck to the pins, and these are little converters, I guess. KSR3R33S. Um, but there are they potted? I don't know. They might not be. I'll try and crack one of those open with the knife and uh, see what's inside. Look, I can, can see a PCB in there. Yeah, yeah. We well, got the board. There you go. Not potted at all. Or oh, actually, hang on. No. Yep. There we go. Got it. And there it is. It's an MP2307, I think it is. So we'll have to look that one up. And this looks like it's just got some gunk on the top of that inductor there. No point taking it off, but uh, yeah, nothing fancy there at all. Boring as batshit, I'm afraid. And I just checked that uh, MP2307 is a monolithic uh, power converters step-down converter. Nothing uh, fancy at all. You know, 90-something uh, percent uh, efficiency, uh, peak efficiency, um, you know, down to, uh, it can have uh, 0.9 volts to 20-something odd uh, volts output. And, well, it's not exciting at all. Um, I think Jeff, was it? Um, I think he mentioned he wanted me to uh, test these on the dummy load, but um, ugh, quite frankly, ugh, couldn't be bothered. And here's the power adapter, 5 volts, 1 amps, so it's a 5 volt uh, universal input, 100 to 240 volts, made in China. Power adapter, woohoo, should be a real treat inside. So what I'm going to do with this crappy adapter, I will just leave it for a uh, future tear down because I predict this is going to be one steaming pile of dog turd. So <laughs> we'll leave that. I think it probably deserves its own uh, episode with uh, a decent 
analysis of it and a bit of reverse engineering and testing perhaps. So um, yeah, I'm not going to bother with these. So yeah, thank you very much, uh, Jeff. And let's go on to more mail. But I have taken apart this battery though, and I just snipped off this plastic surround and ta-da, it looks like we have some protection circuitry in there. Now, somewhat surprisingly, this actually looks quite decent. It looks like it's got uh, at least a couple of devices on there. So a couple of the, probably a couple of MOSFETs and a controller in there would be my guess. And uh, so it, it's quite surprised in this fey pussy battery. There we go. Ta-da! Let's have a look at what we've got here. And I'm looking through my beautiful Mantis Elite microscope here. It's really a gem. It does work. It's sometimes a bit tricky to uh, get on video here, but there you go. There's a uh, eight pin device and 8230C. A uh, little bit hard to Google that one, but I came up with an IR uh, H8230C, 9.4 amp, 200 volt, 0.5 ohm in channel. MOSFET and that's exactly what I expected in there and there's a six pin SOT 23 can't really read the markings on that and even if I did it probably wouldn't tell us much um, it'd be very difficult to find out what that device is and this one here we'll have to flip it around but it's an 8205A and I googled that and what popped up was a uh, Seiko brand uh, battery management um, I see, and I thought, oh, bingo, got it. Um, you know, it's a multi-cell uh, battery protection uh, chip that, you know, detects overcharge and uh, over-discharge and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it's not the same because it is, that was a 16-pin package, and this one is only a little 8-pin package. So, um, anyway, uh, something's wrong there. I reckon we've got a little 6-pin uh, controller two uh, different MOSFETs. This one's an N-channel, this one would be a P-channel MOSFET, and uh, they've, you know, I, they've done a decent job there. That is a, a proper battery protection board. So there you go, the fey pussy battery um, actually has decent protection built in. Go figure. I'm as surprised as you are. Now next one here is from Russia. Hi to all my viewers in Russia. This is awesome. And uh, it comes from Mikhail. I won't even try and pronounce that last name, but uh, thank you very much, Mikhail. Very good uh, uh, Russian name there from Moscow with a K. Is that how people from Moscow spell Moscow in English? I don't know. Interesting. And uh, down here, let's put it to Australia. And then I presume that is Russian for Australia. I can only presume. Excellent, didn't know that. Stamps, check it out. There's uh, Russia 2009, I have no idea what it says up the top, but there's obviously some sort of uh, domed uh, sort of, you know, building there with a dome on it. Looks pretty important somewhere in uh, Russia, presumably. So, cool, thank you very much. Let's open it up and have a look. All right, have we had something from Russia before? I don't think so. By the way, um, I do like postcards. So if you want to send in postcards, by all means, send me postcards. It's flat. So this is going to be interesting. What do we got here? Hello. Martini gold, a new taste. What? What have we got here? I should read the note. Let's read the note first. Hang on. No, there, oh yes there is. Here we go. Ta-da, hello there from Soviet Russia. This is Mikhail from zeptobars.ru. There you go, check him out. I am working on my own microcontroller, but there is still a long way till I would have pre-production chips for you. So this time I am sending multimedia package from special edition of Playboy magazine. <laughs> so you can tear it down right now. By the way, IT geeks, found out how to flash working Linux there. So when this magazine came out, geeks were buying all out special Playboys across the Moscow. Sellers were probably slightly surprised. Oh boy. 
Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Let's have a look. What is this? Oh! Oh, it's one of these electronic cards. It's playing. Uh, uh oh. Right. Yeah, I don't think we should play this any further. I'm a bit concerned. This is awesome! This is like a full on video card. Sorry about the reflection there. Well, I'm like, well, my fears were unfounded. This is like literally just an ad. It's a multimedia ad, which they put inside the Playboy magazine too. And it's got a built-in graphic screen and everything. Hey, it's reflective. You can see me. And that's just incredible. The circuit board is underneath here and uh, we're gonna have to tear this thing down. I, that, that has got Tear Down Tuesday written all over it. So I'm gonna save that. Thank you very much, Mikhail. I'm gonna save that for a Tear Down Tuesday. Definitely, don't wanna waste that on a mailbag. That's just freaking awesome. All right. Jeez, all this stuff to tear down. Oh man, I wish I could do it on the mailbag, but really, we don't have time. I've gotta get uh, through the mail here. And if you wanna send me stuff, send it to that crazy Aussie bloke, PO Box 7949, Borkham Hills, BC, New South Wales 2153, Australia. Not Austria. This one doesn't need Australia on it because it's Australia Post. There it is, comes from Australia. So looks like it comes from Dandenong in Victoria. Excellent, and uh, no name. There you go, nothing. So let's rip it open. They've got one of these lift and pull tabs. Ta -da. What? Oh God, a whole bunch of stuff in here. What do we got? Man, looks like there's no, is there a note? Hi Dave, just stuff that may be of use. Parts, cool, still no name. That's awesome, just random stuff. All right, random boards. Thank you very much. Oh, a big Spartan device on there. We'll have a look at these. So let's open them up. They're random. What are they? Okay, they're some sort of plug-in moduli thing. And uh, just, wait, well, yeah, that's a big BGA. And yeah, lots of random modules from something. He doesn't say. We've got uh, some memory, memory and some plug-in boards. And this one's from Cisco Systems, copyright 2000. It's reasonably old, so some sort of Cisco networky type controller. We've got a massive BGA here. We've got a uh, PLCC up here, a couple of uh, large pink out quad flat packs, and a Xilinx, uh, what's that? It's a XCV50 and a couple of unpopulated footprints here, presumably some sort of memory, some DC to DC converter stuff down here, and it's designed to plug into something. So it's maybe some sort of add on board or controller board. And the main device is a Connexent, and I hadn't heard of them before, but uh, Google them, and they're a spin off of uh, the old Rockwell uh, group, apparently. So um, yeah, they do, uh, you know, custom. Uh, LSI devices like this, um, audio, uh, video, and uh, you know, compression, and all that sort of uh, stuff. So, you know, it's some sort of, uh, it's an edge stream, it's a VP uh, 2224A, and if you Google that, you just get a whole bunch of those, you know, online Asian Chinese suppliers. There's no data sheets, no nothing that I could easily find. So, there you go. And. Uh, these other boards, um, I'm not sure what they're actually uh, out of. Some sort of Cisco systems thing, but uh, these might be useful for, uh, I don't know, scrapping some parts out of or something like that. Not terribly exciting. I'm not uh, gonna go into it too much. Some sort of controller, E1 uh, controller, yeah, a network, E1 network connection, something like that, perhaps. I'm, I'm not sure, not really up on all that sort of stuff. Thank you very much, anonymous person, for sending in 
some random boards. And the last one for today is a box. I love boxes like this. It's beautiful. It doesn't fit in my PO box though, so I get a little card and I've got to go to the counter and actually pick the thing up. Um, and it's from the United States of America. And from Stephen Gallant. Thank you very much, Stephen. He's from Colesbad in California. I've been to Colesbad and um, uh, they've got a, a pretty horrible rocky beach there from what I remember. And I got food poisoning at the Colesbad Hilton Hotel that ruined my entire trip to the US, knocked me out for two weeks. Bloody Hilton Hotel. I think it was a dodgy chicken. So anyway, let's open this sucker up. And uh, <clears throat> so thank you very much, Stephen. The, uh, I never got to the uh, Lego world. I think there's Lego land in uh, Carlsbad in uh, California. Never got there. I started my road trip from uh, Carlsbad and I went all the way up to uh, uh, all the way up to Silicon Valley. So up uh, Highway 1. Ta -da, here we go. We have a letter. Hi Dave. Saw your mail saying we want a bit of skydive gear to control your camera. So as with my AAD was just reached the end of his life, I decided to send it to you. It's an AAD. Of course, it will probably continue to work for some time. Older designs use gas-filled tubes, mechanical gain, and springs to move the reserve parachute release pin. Ooh, interesting. An example is the FXC model 12,000. 12,000, God. The modern AAD device, um, such as the uh, Cypress, uh, bleh, bleh, cybernetic parachute release system, cool, uses an MPU and electrical charge to fire a cutting blade to cut the reserve parachute pin loop. This releases the spring-loaded pilot chute that attracts, uh, extracts the reserve. Wow, I thought, I had no idea. I, I'm not into uh, skydiving. I, you know, I'd much rather fly the perfectly usable plane than uh, jump out of it, but uh, I can certainly appreciate it. Um, and I had no idea that there were electronics or mechanical things controlling the reserve parachute uh, the pin. I just thought it was a, you know, a, well, I thought there was just a manual pin which you just pulled out and your reserve chute came out. It seems to be more complex than that. Maybe I can take it apart. Look for a manual on the internet. Cool. Anything else in there? No, that's it. This is the uh, box from DigiKey, of course. This is the famous DigiKey uh, shredded material. And anyway, I've got lots of static there when you pull off sticky tape from this. So once again, I've got another Teardown Tuesday item. I'm not going to do it on the mailbag. God. Anyway, this is... Geez, that's that's pretty heavy. Part of the heavy part of the kit. So I assume we've got to find a manual. So that's some sort of that's some sort of pin. It's got some wires going to it. And there's a button. Right, wrong. <laughs> little dude with his uh, little parachutist dude there with his hat on. Brilliant. <laughs> right or wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, some people say jumping out of a plane is wrong, but uh, I'll do it one day. It'll be fun. And uh, Cyprus, there you go, made in Germany. I don't want my German viewers. Brilliant. We'll have to look up the uh, manual for that one. Manufactured, seventh month, 99. So it uh, is reasonably old, but there you go. It, it will certainly be worth a tear down. It's okay, let's try and get this thing to do something. I'll follow Stephen's instructions in here. Click the button when it red led lights. There we go, press it again. No, yep, yeah. press it again. Three, four, and we've got a countdown. Aha, look at that. Da, da, da. And what happens? It does something here, it cuts the, something activates. Presumably, like there's a cutter in there that I assume your cord, you shoot your cord goes through that, and uh, it actually cuts it, I presume. That's what uh, Stephen's implying here. It releases, it cuts, the, you know, fires a cutting blade to cut the reserve parachute pin loop. Oh, what? Terribly disappointing. Oh. What? Well, I've downloaded the user guide for this thing, so let's take a look at it. And here it is. Design philosophy, the Cypress device. Cypress, which is the acronym for Cybernetic Parachute Release System. 
is an automatic activation device which meets all the needs and wishes of today's skydivers. Once it's installed, you can't hear it, you can't feel it, and you can't see it. Aha! Operation is quite simple. Just switch it on in the morning prior to the first jump, and then forget about it. It's not necessary to switch it off. Do it itself. The weather is constantly checked by Cypress over the day, measuring the air pressure twice a minute. This means that the unit is always calibrated to the precise ground level. Well, you'd hope so. It's an emergency activation device that uh, activates your reserve chute, presumably just before you uh, go splat. So, uh, expert Cypress is designed in such a way that it won't restrict a skydiver in any way, even with extreme maneuvers during exit and in free fall. It'll cope with it. Whatever you can think of, under canopy, like stalls, spiral turns, down planes. Oh, these all sound fun. Excellent. It won't interfere with any normal activities. Only free fall, here we go, only free fall in very low altitude will cause the Cypress to take action. In this situation, Cypress will activate the reserve approximately 4.5 seconds prior to impact. One, two, three, four... Uh, splat well geez that's not much time i don't know how what uh how many feet that is they they always work in feet i think these skydivers do they i'm not sure is that the uh de facto standard unit so yeah four and a half seconds geez before you hit the uh the the ground and go splat that's uh not much margin for error there so you'd want to be pretty confident that this thing is uh uh, you know, it is actually calibrated. So, geez, I don't know, four and a half seconds. And here we go. Here's the tech specs for this thing. It's, uh, I, I think this is the model I've got. I don't know. It might be a newer one, but I, I think it's pretty identical. Uh, working temperature range here up plus 63 to minus 20 centigrade. Of course, you know, you're up high. It's gonna, it can get uh, pretty cold up there. So this thing is going to be designed really well ultra high reliability unit so this will make for an interesting uh tear down it's completely waterproof uh to 1.5 uh, meters as well battery life is uh 500 jumps approximately two years i would presume that uh it has like a lithium primary battery in there that would uh, be my assumption you got to change it every couple of years and it functions for 14 hours and then switches off because all it's got to do is read the sensors and things like that and uh, you know me measure the uh, altitude uh, sensor and the speed um, sensor and uh, or if it's the same uh, thing and it gets a rate of change and once you hit if you're going fast at where is it let's have a look down here it activates activation altitude there we go approximately 225 meters or 750 feet so if you get to that altitude and you're still going at greater than or equal to 13 meters per second or 29 miles per hour bang it's gonna it you know it knows you're about to go splat and i guess it doesn't want to kill itself either so uh, uh it's going to activate the reserve shoot Geez, if you haven't done that already, of course. So this is like an emergency backup thing. So it will actually cut that cord and activate your reserve chute. And hopefully, I don't know, can any skydivers out there, maybe uh, Stephen can tell us, uh, you know, can you stop in 750 feet like, with your reserve chute, which is smaller than normal, I believe. I guess you can. There you go. So this will actually be interesting because it's got an operational life here of total lifetime of 12 years from date of manufacture plus three months maximum um so that it's designed for a 12 year operational life you know with three or four battery changes or something like that so this will be a really high quality construction in here uh, you know vibration proof shock proof you know all sorts of you know designed for extreme temperature ranges and so it'll be a make for a really interesting teardown can't wait. Tear down Tuesday material. Definitely. Thank you very much, Stephen from Colesbad. Anyway, that's the mailbag. All done and dusted. Got, man, more tear down Tuesday items than I can poke a stick at. Hope you liked it. Catch you next time.